Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the restoration of Erethea is a turn-based strategy game developed by John Van Canem through New World Computing for Microsoft Windows and released by the 3D Company in 1999. An Apple Macintosh port was released by 3D, and a Linux port was released by Lockheed Software, both later that year. In 2000, a Game Boy Color port entitled Heroes of Might and Magic 2 was released and the Dreamcast port was cancelled. It is the third installment of the Heroes of Might and Magic series. The game's story is first referenced throughout Might and Magic 6, The Mandate of Heaven and serves as a prequel to Might and Magic 7, For Blood and Honor. The player can choose to play through seven different campaigns telling the story, or play in a scenario against computer or human opponents. The game play is very similar to its predecessors in that the player controls a number of heroes that command an army of creatures inspired by myth and legend. The game play is divided into two parts, tactical overland exploration and a turn-based combat system. The player creates an army by spending resources at one of the eight town types in the game. The hero will progress in experience by engaging in combat with enemy heroes and monsters. The conditions for victory vary depending on the map, including conquest of all enemies and towns, collection of a certain amount of a resource, or finding the Grail artifact. Heroes 3 was released to universal acclaim and was praised by critics. The game received the expansion packs Heroes of Might and Magic 3, Armageddon's Blade and Heroes of Might and Magic 3, The Shadow of Death. Heroes Chronicles a series of short introductory games based on the Heroes 3 engine, was also released. A special version of Heroes 3 titled Heroes 3 Complete, which included the original game and both expansion packs, was released in 2000. Story The game's story unfolds primarily through a series of seven playable campaigns, all set upon the continent of Antagoric. During the campaigns, the story is told from alternating points of view, giving players the opportunity to play as each of the town alignments. Following the disappearance of King Roland Ironfist of Enroth prior to Might and Magic 6, the Mandate of Heaven, his wife, Queen Catherine, is left to rule the realm. In the meantime, her father, King Griffin Hart of Erethea, is assassinated. Without their beloved king, the kingdom of Erethea falls to the dark forces of Nigan and Aeophil. Queen Catherine returns home to Antagoric seeking to rally the people of her homeland and lead them against the evil that has ravaged their nation. Erethea's capital of Stedwick is sacked by the dungeon lords of Nigan and the Cregans of Aeophil. Meanwhile, the nations of Tetalia and Krulet skirmish at the western border, seizing the chance to expand their territory. Catherine's first task is to establish a foothold in the conquered kingdom by enlisting the aid of allies. The wizards of Brocada and the elves of A.V. Lee answer her call, and together they push towards Stedwick and eventually retake it, quickly quelling the border war in the west. Soon after, Lucifer Cregan, a commander in the Aeophil armies, sends an envoy to Erethea claiming that Roland Ironfist is captive within their territories. A.V. Lee invades Aeophil, but fails to rescue Roland, who is transported to their northern holdings. Afterwards, Catherine invades Nigan, pushing the dungeon armies back to their island home. In the meantime, the necromancers of Deja, having been responsible for the assassination of King Griffinhart, plot to revive his corpse as a lick. He planned to use his wisdom in leading their own armies of the undead. However, King Griffinhart's will proves too much for the necromancers even in his corrupted state, and he becomes a rogue lick. Having little other recourse, Queen Catherine is forced to ally herself with the necromancers and together they set out to destroy the lick of King Griffin Hart before he becomes too powerful. A final bonus campaign, accessible only after the main campaigns are complete, tells the story of separatists living in the contested lands, a war-torn border between Erethea and A. V. Lee. Tired of the skirmishes that bring unrest to their homelands, they join together to fight for independence from the two large kingdoms. It is later implied that this rising was orchestrated by Archibald Ironfist, the antagonist of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Gameplay Gameplay consists of strategic exploration on the world map and tactical turn based combat. As with the series in general, the player controls a number of heroes, 
who act as generals and command troops comprising various types of creatures inspired by myth and legend. The player can complete or win a map by completing the objectives set out by the creator of the map. Objectives may include conquering all the towns in the map, gathering a set amount of resources, or piecing together a puzzle to find the Grail artifact. If a player loses all their heroes and towns, they will lose the game. There are two layers to the world map, the above ground and the underground. There are typically subterranean gateways that lead to and from the underground. Maps are filled with a huge variety of buildings, treasures, monsters, mines and so forth that reward extensive exploration. At the very least, a player must locate mines and flag them, since these resources are required to develop towns. The player must also develop his hero's skills, both by battling creatures and by acquiring artifacts or visiting special locations. For example, the Witch Hut can give a hero a random skill and the Learning Stone provides 1000 experience points. Heroes are given a choice of skills to upgrade upon leveling up, as well as becoming better at combat or the use of magic. The skills must be chosen carefully, since they are permanent and only a limited number of skills can be learnt. Examples include a damage bonus by all archery units in the hero's command, the ability to walk further across the map each day or specializing in an elemental school of magic to make the associated spells far more effective. The player's towns serve many functions, but most importantly they allow recruitment of creatures to form armies. Towns also provide funds, new spells and a fortified location to make a last stand against an invading enemy hero. To build new structures within a town requires gold and usually one or more type of resource. Wood and ore are needed for most structures, but more expensive buildings will also require rarer resources. All factions require a disproportionate quantity of just one of these special resources, making the acquisition of a corresponding mine essential to victory. This same resource is also needed when hiring the most powerful creatures available to that faction, for example gems for dragons or mercury for hydras. Each faction also has a handful of unique structures available only to them. If a player finds the Grail artifact, they can deliver it to a town to make that town the Grail's permanent home by creating a special structure. The Grail bestows greatly increased creature growth and weekly income, in addition to a bonus unique to the town, such as the skyship in the Tower Town, which reveals the entire world map and gives defending heroes a knowledge statistic bonus in the event of a siege. Castles There are eight different castles available in Heroes 3, three good towns, three evil, and two neutral. Another neutral town, the Conflux was added in the Armageddon's Blade expansion pack. Each town has seven basic creatures, each of which can be upgraded to a more powerful variant. Each town also features two associated hero types, one that leans more toward might, and one that leans more toward magic. Some towns have a predisposition toward might or magic, and the leanings of the hero classes may simply be a matter of degrees. The castle army is made up predominantly of humans, represented as traditional medieval troops, supplemented by the addition of mythological griffins and divine angels. The might hero is the knight and the magic hero is the cleric. The kingdom of Erethea is of the castle alignment. The rampart army is composed mainly of sylvan creatures from Germanic and Greco-Roman mythology. Accordingly, their home is in the grasslands and forests. The Rampart Town is also host to good dragons. The Might Hero is the Ranger and the Magic Hero is the Druid. The Kingdom of A.V. Lee is of the Rampart Alignment. The Tower is associated with arcane elements of fantasy, and armies are composed of wizards, magical beings, and animated constructs. Towers are at home in Arctic environments. The Might Hero is the Alchemist and the Magic Hero is the Wizard. The Desert Kingdom of Brocada is of the Tower Alignment. The Inferno is a hell-like castle built on smoldering ground. Its armies consist of demonic creatures, such as devils and demons. The Might Hero is the Demoniac and the Magic Hero is the Heretic. The Kragans of Aeothal are follower of the Inferno Alignment. The Necropolis is a ghost town of the undead. The Might Hero is the Death Knight and the Magic Hero is the Necromancer. The Kingdom of Deja is of the Necropolis alignment. 
the dungeon houses monsters that live in underground caverns, including the evil dragons. The might hero is the overlord and the magic hero is the warlock. The kingdom of Nigan is of the dungeon alignment. The stronghold is populated with brutish, tribal creatures associated with barbarism. Goblinoids and organic giants make up the bulk of the army. Stronghold units are at home in the deserts and wastes. The might hero is the barbarian and the magic hero is the battle mage. The kingdom of Krulad is of the stronghold alignment. The fortress is built in marshland and is home to gnolls and numerous reptilian creatures. The might hero is the beast master and the magic hero is the witch. The kingdom of Tatalia is of the fortress alignment. The conflux creatures and heroes are mainly elementals. The might hero is the planeswalker and the magic hero is the elementalist. The heroes and buildings focus on magic specialities, as well as most creatures having innate magic resistances and immunities. The conflux has no specified alignment. There are also many neutral creatures, not associated with any town type, which can be recruited from special buildings on the game map. Expansion Packs Two official expansion packs were released for Heroes 3. The first of these expansions, Armageddon's Blade, introduced a ninth town alignment, the Conflux. A random scenario generator, a variety of new creatures, heroes, and structures. And six new playable campaigns. The second expansion, The Shadow of Death, was a standalone expansion that included restoration of Erethia and added seven new playable campaigns and a variety of new artifacts, including combination artifacts. Combination artifacts were extremely powerful items assembled by collecting a specific set of lesser artifacts. Complete Edition In 2000, a bundle containing Heroes 3 and both expansion packs was released as Heroes 3 Complete. More than just bundling the original game discs, however, this release reworked the game's installation process as well as its in-game menus to reflect a unified product. Reception Heroes 3 was praised by critics, receiving an average score of 87% in game rankings. Computer Gaming World Euro Show Euro S. Robert Coffey said that the game expands upon the insanely addictive play of the previous edition retaining the core game play while enhancing almost every facet of the game. He continued to say that the game is mind-boggling in its depth, but criticized its uneven campaign pacing and sluggish connection speeds during online play. He concluded, ultimately, the rewards of Heroes of Might and Magic 3 far outweigh its few drawbacks. This is a game that strategy fans should absolutely be playing. References External links Heroes of Might and Magic 3, The Restoration of Erethia at Moby Games, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 at Game Facts.